What, what's your perspective on 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 the famous uh, term product market fit? I've been asking um, founders in this series the question uh, because a lot of founders are sort of scrambling. Most founders, I guess, are scrambling around trying to find that magic point at which things suddenly click and clients suddenly go from beta or or you know pilots to to paying and retaining and growing. Uh, how did that work for you in the early early years? That's interesting. I, 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 I um, we're um, we're kind of much more on the kind of continuous improvement um school of thought, and so I'm not sure there was necessarily a moment where it totally clicked. Um, we kind of have the opinion that we could go out of business tomorrow. We have no right to be here, and if we don't do a better job for our clients tomorrow, then then um then the the likely to start looking elsewhere, and and therefore our our energy and our focus is about finding a better fit in the future rather than one now. And there's, there's something very, um, very uh, synergi synergistic with the fact that what we do is still deeply mature. Like we've been doing what we do for 11 years and people are starting to get a bit more familiar now with how you use data to drive commercial performance. But it's still in its infancy and it's, it's still very mature. And so there's a kind of continual improvement in our fit within the market as brands become more accustomed to how they might buy sponsorship rights that involve the use of data and digital assets or when media deals shift from being um, delivered by traditional methods and start being streamed, there's a change again in how currencies work. And again, our market fit in all those instances, if, if I'm answering your question, it shifts quickly in that instance. You know, we're seeing it right now in merchandise rights. Merchandise rights is going, going through the most radical change in terms of how currencies exchange between manufacturers and rights holders with regards to apparel rights. And, and therefore, our market fit in that guise has changed exponentially just in recent years. And we've got multiple examples now of things we didn't have a few years ago, which has shifted our market fit enormously. So I guess my point is, um, in, in this fast moving world, um, standing still is dangerous and we're constantly looking to how we're gonna be better tomorrow. And we're fine, we haven't found our market fit yet, I think is the answer to the question. And, um, and we're looking for it. Constantly searching. Mm -hmm. um, the the, the the question of, of agility, I guess. I mean, I, I guess, and in, in, in by other industry standards, you're you're you know you're not a huge huge business employing four hundred plus. By I suppose industry industry standards, you you probably are. But the question of remaining agile, because you've talked there a little bit about yeah. how you you want to constantly evolve, and, and some particularly some sectors you mentioned are perhaps moving faster than other more traditional sectors that have. Have matured uh, within yeah. the, the sport in general. Uh, how yeah. do you how do you encourage and maintain that as a founder and a leader? Um, we, um, obvious things I've already kind of said: care about it, talk about it, encourage yeah. it, recognize it when it happens. All those things are true. So we, you know, we have a you know the most important, the most important things I do every week is write to the whole company with the highlights from that week, and we'll celebrate yeah. celebrate these things in the week. But maybe maybe I'll give you one example of what we do in this space. There's multiple things. There's no silver bullet to this stuff, but. Um, we, we don't have an org structure in two circles. That sounds awfully boring as far as we're concerned. But, but you, you can't be a great team if you don't know what formation you're playing in. So we have a team formation. So the whole, all, the whole company sits on a team formation, a bit like a sports team formation. And, and, then, and, and, and we actually call that our universe. And within our universe, we have, um, we have rocket ships. And our rocket ships are little things that fly around our universe, finding new um, innovative things to add value that we haven't done before. And any one, in any one year, we're flying like seven or eight rocket ships. And we're basically hoping that those rocket ships can take us to the moon. It's all very cliche, but within our little clique over here in our small village, it works quite well. And, um, and they will drive new value for sports organizations. So some of them crash and fail because that's what happens when you're trying to do new things. They just don't work. It was a good idea, but didn't execute. As you know, Silicon Valley would, would say, you fail fast type mentality and, and just learn. And other than others of them have created great new capabilities that we didn't have yesterday that that, that are going to rewire the industry tomorrow. So, so we, we and these rocket ships, essentially, they all have their own balance scorecard, they have dedicated teams, right. they have clear missions, they have short budgets, they run on sprint cycles, and we'll kill them as soon as we decide that they're not taking us to where we're going to. And that's not failure, that's learning. And we, um, and we, and we launched a new one. So we, we have structured ways of doing innovation that help us um, fly faster. Great, very interesting. And the the perspective of, I'd be interested in your perspective of, given that we, we know you and, and your business as, as educating the sports industry, if you like, or working with the sports industry and um, leveraging data to really power commercial strategies. Um, 
what can what can you and what have you learned from the sports industry? I, I, I guess it's a two way thing, isn't it? I mean, uh, what what can you as a and you're a largely a tech driven business? I guess that's fair yeah. to say, yeah. right? Um, and there's lots that the sports industry have and can learn from from businesses like yourself. But I'm interested to know what what you've learned from the other side, from their core competencies and capabilities that that, that sit within the federations, the leagues, the clubs, and other other sports organisations. That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that one very often. I don't answer oh. that very often. Um, what would I say? I would say that um, the... It's not a trick question, by the way, Gareth. So. No, it's not. It's a good question. <laughs> it's not. It's a good question. What do we learn from our clients? We learn about the pressure and the privilege they have to govern sports. Like Our clients are predominantly sports organisations that are responsible, that are custodians, the guardians yeah. of ensuring that jersey or that sport or that team is a, in a better place than when they than when they um, when they you know the tenure of those executives are in place and there's a real pressure and privilege that comes with, with doing that especially when you're entwined in such complex issues like you know like um you know what, what you know, how you deal with trans transgender athletes or whether you yeah. have um you know whether you do or don't have russian and belarusian athletes in your competitions these things are really complicated things that are on our clients doors every day um i think that so you learn about the pressure they they have and the importance therefore of the simplification of things like digital transformation to make it really digestible for people whose is not their day jobs because their jobs day jobs are figuring out things that, that are you know far more complex and, and if not more important than than data, data digital transformation and things like how you deal with those you know geopolitical issues um, so you learn a lot about perspective and simplification of complex things, and yeah. um, and that's definitely one thing that we learn. Um, I think we see, um, you know, we see really they're really multifaceted businesses. Our, our clients and, and commercial marketing is only a small part of that. So you learn a lot about how you engage a whole business in a change program, and we're changing a lot of it as a business ourselves, and we're really obsessed yeah. around how we change brilliantly. And we help our clients change in a really multifaceted way. So we're working with one sports organization at the moment, completely changing the way they think about themselves from essentially being a tournament organizer to being a media business, which is a trans transformation a lot of clients are going through. And that change program affects the performance part of the business as much as the, the grounds people, as much as the as much as the HR team. And we bring everybody on those journeys. And the way we do those kind of communication tools, I think is really important to how we become a better business as well. So there's, there's some thoughts. Yep. No, very good. And what, what, a couple, a couple more questions from us. Say, what, what um, trends are you sort of monitoring at the moment, and, and how are they impacting the? Uh, how will they impact on what you do next, and how you move as a business? Um, great question. Uh, well, there's this big thing like private, private money or external or institutional money coming into sport is an enormous change that's happening. You know, with um, you know, numerous examples, Live Golf being the most notorious one that's daily, you know, yeah. daily in the newspapers at the moment, or indeed, you know, Redbird Capital buying AC Milan, or, or, or obviously um, CVC being very active. There's you know, numerous examples of, of new money, different types of money coming into, to come into sport. And that is going to create a new era of professionalism, a new era of competitivism, a new level of discipline required to be a high performance sports organisation is going to require new skills that haven't existed before and, and fundamentally we are pro competition and therefore i think the competition that's going to come from people raising their games is excellent i think that trend has got many um you know consequences down downstream in terms of um whether it doesn't mean you need to be taking private equity money to be getting ahead but it doesn't mean you need to be having the disciplines and the capabilities they have so certainly very observant of that really observant of how sports are going to lead the way on 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 making um, or showing the world how to be genuinely inclusive. And it's really complicated and it's not straightforward. But I think sport will lead the way and show the world and show society how to be genuinely inclusive. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and how sport can do that. So yeah, there's some some of them. I think um, the iSport Connect conference this week did a tremendous job on continuing the education of, um, of what Web3 is going to do. And as we go into these decades ahead of continual evolution and what um, what and how the internet works and how on which we can become connected in, um, in, and how that's going to change the sport industry is, is again multifaceted and got huge uh, ripple effects for all sports organisations. Well, thanks for the plug, Gareth. Um, no, no trends conversation at the moment is complete without a mention of Web3, is it? 
No, indeed. Indeed. I just wanted to be bang on track. But no, it was a great event. Um, a great event at the mighty Emirates Stadium. And um, yeah, it's a good conversation for the industry to be having. Great. Gareth, look, thanks so much for your time. It's been really insightful. Really enjoyed it. It was a, a brief um, dip into your world. And I know founders across the sports industry will benefit. And indeed, um, anyone listening and watching this, uh, this vlog will, will benefit from your insight. So thanks again for sharing that. Thank you for having me on.